If you were like me and you thought that React Memo was going to solve all your performance problems, well, think again. After multiple days of looking into React Memo and using it vigorously to optimize my app, I honestly wish React would just get rid of React Memo altogether. Because if you just follow how React wants you to compose components together, it completely makes React Memo useless. Like, it doesn't do anything. The React Memo documentation isn't the best. Considering, personally, the most important information is literally hidden in this should you add memo everywhere dropdown. And it's the first point. When a component visually wraps around another component, let it accept JSX as children. This way, when the wrapper component updates its own state, React knows that its children don't need to re-render. If you were like me, you would have read through this documentation and you would have thought, hey, there's no side effect to wrapping everything or every component in your app with memo. So why don't I just do that and I'll just make it thoughtless. First of all, I did that. And I what I realized was, wait, memoization doesn't even work. Everything's still re-rendering. And then I looked deeper and I was like, okay, so every time I pass a prop to my components, if that prop isn't of a primitive value, then it will be recreated on every single re-render. As you can imagine, I had to wrap props in use callback and use memo hooks, and the code just bloated real quickly. Now, I wanna show you guys a few examples of how memoization works, how it is easily broken, and what I plan to do moving forward to optimize my React projects. Right here, I have a, my base example. A simple component that contains two state, an outer count and an inner count, which increments depending on which component I click on. If I click on the outer component, it'll increment the outer count. And if I click on the inner component, it will increment the inner count. Every time that this component re-renders, a new color for each box will be generated. And we can see whenever I click one of these components, both the outer container and inner container is re-rendering. And you can also see that through React Scan's overlay. Because the state is in the top level component, obviously everything inside here will be re-rendered every single time any of these state changes. Now, let's say we want to memoize the inner component. What would that look like? What would be the effect of that? Well, here, I have now extracted the inner component into its own memoized component. I've moved the inner count state into the inner component as well. What do you think will happen if I click on the outer component? Well, if you guess that the inner component won't re-render, you're right. That is because React knows that this component is now memoized and no props has changed and therefore it will skip the re-rendering of the inner component altogether. But let's say we want to add a class name prop here. So here I'm just going to add class name and class name and append class name to the button. And I want to add a border to the inner container. So border when I click on the outer container, do you think the inner container will re-render? If you guess no, correct. The inner container is still not going to re-render. This is because React compares each prop with the object.is method to check whether they are equal to the previous render. And that determines whether React will re-render the memoized component. This works fine for primitive values like string. However, if we start adding, for example, on click function down into the inner component, do you think if I click the outer component, do you think the inner component is going to re-render? The answer is yes. The reason being on click is a function. Every time this example one root component re-renders, a new on click function will be recreated on every single render. 
obviously to fix this, what I would do is <laughs> I would go const on click up here and we can use the use callback click and pass it on on click because now I have created the on click function using the use callback hook. This will no longer be created on every single render of this component. The affected behavior is that if I click on the outer, the inner will no longer render other than the first time. And as you can see, this works clearly. So what happened if we wanted to add other props that are not string or numbers or primitive values? Now we're going to have to create a use callback or use memo hook for every single one of those just to make sure that the inner component does not re-render every single time its parent component re-renders. As you can see, this can and will become very complex very fast. And think about what happened if you want the use callback to update the inner function. And now we're dealing with multiple dependencies and that can obviously lead to a lot of confusion and code bloat as well. At this point, you may be thinking, sure, it's a lot of code, but it works, doesn't it? Like it actually improves performance. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, let me show you how easily this breaks in practice. Okay, here I have another example. Example number two. It's basically the same. I have an inner component that is memoized and then this outer component wrapper around it. I am passing a child, a single child, into the inner component. Now, if I click the outer container, do you think the inner container is going to re-render? It does re-render. And you might be thinking, wait, why? Why is this re-rendering? It's memoized. Why is this child breaking the memoization? This is being recreated every single time this component gets re-rendered. Therefore, React will see that the children pass into the inner component has changed. Therefore, re-rendering the inner component and in turn breaks memoization. You're welcome. <laughs> Great. Is there anything we can do about this? I'm glad you asked. Because if we just follow the way React wants us to compose components together, we can get rid of React Memo altogether. Let me show you. Here we have example three. You may notice something different. There's only a few lines in this root component. There is outer component and then inner component. You also may notice that the state have been moved out of the root component. The outer component will now contain the outer count and the inner count will still be in the inner component. If I click the outer component, the expectation is that the inner component will no longer re-render and vice versa. The reason for this is when the outer component re-renders itself, it will not re-render the children. This is the preferred way of how React wants us to use component composition. Is pretty, I would say pretty opinionated, if that's the right word for it. And you can also see that I have completely removed React memo that wraps the inner component. Yes, this is the way to get rid of React memo completely and also keep your code cleaner all at the same time. But there are caveats and situations where this way of composing components together may not work for you. And this is where external state management like Zustand comes into play. Specifically, this is what I'll be using moving forward in my React application along with component composition. Using state management like Zustand allows you to surgically update state and only render components that actually needs to be listening or update when specific state changes. And unlike React state where you define both the state and the set state at the same time, and whenever you call that set state, that state causes the component to re-render, you can actually just update the state without actually updating that component that called the state update. 
Another solution would be to try out the new React compiler. This is this is still under construction, and I believe it's still in beta. However, you can try it on specific directory. So you can actually specify a directory in your project that you want the React compiler to optimize. And if you're using React DevTools, you'll be able to see which component has been optimized by the React compiler through the memo badge next to the component, which is really cool. I think this is something I'm definitely going to be looking into, but I don't think it's ready for production just yet. I will leave some great reads on React Memo down below in the comments. What am I talking about in the description? If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really lets me know that this video is half decent. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Peace.